Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another video. But before I get started with the subject of this video, I want to give a huge shout out to my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks is a company that provides upgrade decals for modern Transformer figures along with reproduction decals for the vintage ones. While visiting Toy Hacks, make sure and check out the Toy Hacks Armory to see their line of Transformers weaponry in multiple colors and toy stages for awesome display backdrops. Each purchase from Toy Hacks earns you RoboSense that you can use for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors, so make sure and check out ToyHacks.com and tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bot in this video is the Magic Square MSB18 Light of Justice Legend Scale Optimus Prime. Now, taking a quick look at the packaging, I like this. Magic Square's mascot is Aaron from the G1 episode child's play. The Transformers were teleported to his planet where he and his race were these giant aliens. So the Autobots and Decepticons were like little toys to them. And also on the packaging, they have the name Broad Bing Nag, which if you are into literature and are familiar with the story Gulliver's Travels, that was the name of the island that Gulliver went to that had the giants on it. Gulliver went to a couple different islands in his travels. One island, he was the giant. And in this, then he went to this island where it was inhabited by giants. So I think that's really cool how they tied those in together. Also, rest of the box, you've got a great looking picture of Optimus Prime looking very cartoon accurate. There's Prime right there behind the window. You also have the trailer and roller. Side of the box, line drawing of the truck. This side, line drawing of the side of Optimus Prime. And on the back, you've got Prime and the truck with more line drawing. So, really cool looking box. Now, I picked this character up, or this figure up, from ToyDojo.com after him being highly recommended to me by my buddies Bert the Stormtrooper, Kato's Collection, Deluxe Baldwin, and Inutabi. They just raved and raved how good this figure was. And they told me there was one left at toydojo.com. So I went on there, I bought him on a Tuesday, and he arrived on Thursday. So Toy Dojo, super fast shipping. But I had a problem. I opened him up. He was factory sealed, and he had no instructions and no accessories. It was Prime and the trailer. So I'm like, oh man, I said, how disappointing can you be? That it it pissed me off. In a way, I just spent, you know, 60 bucks on this guy, and the accessories weren't there. So I emailed the guys talking about it, and Kato, who's dealt with Toy jo Dojo before, said, just send him a message. They will make it right. So I messaged Toy jo Dojo via Facebook, and they told me just to email their customer support with pictures and explain what happened. So I did. He said he'd take a look in the warehouse to see if they could find anything, and like I said, that was on a Thursday, the Thursday before Memorial Day weekend. And I figured, okay, if anything, I'm not going to hear from them until later on in the week. Cato, Alliance. God bless you, Cato, sent me his instructions and accessories so I could do a figure review. So, Cato, thank you very much. And then Friday morning, I get a message from uh, Toy Dojo. In their warehouse, they found the instructions and accessories, and they put them in the mail, and they're on the way to me now. So fantastic customer service by Toy Dojo. Highly recommended. That was my first purchase from them, and they've got a longtime buyer now because they went above and beyond to make sure I was happy with my purchase. So enough of me rambling on about my situation with the figure. Let's go ahead and get him opened up out of this packaging, and check him out. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. Now, 
Now, once you get your Magic Square MSB18 Light of Justice all opened up and out of the packaging, you should get a set of instructions that are actually fairly well illustrated and pretty easy to follow. He gets a file card here, and this thing looks great. Very G1 animated style, and this is a thick card. I mean, you could use this to squeegee out bubbles on window tint. So you got Light of Justice right there, and got some stats there on the back. He also comes with lots of little accessories. He has his rifle, a silver roller, his Energon axe, two sets of smoke stacks, a little tiny matrix, two extra sets of hands, and a huffer adapter. Also comes with his trailer, and then of course you've got Light of Justice himself. And for the rest of this review, I'm just gonna call him Optimus Prime, because when I say justice, I think of something else. Max, what do you want for dinner? Justice. Now we'll start things off by looking at the trailer and roller first. So grabbing roller here, I really like the looks of this guy. I mean, there's no doubt in your mind that that is roller. Lots of sculpted detail here. You can see the seats there, a little indentation there on the front. And he's even got the two long pegs on the back, just like the original G1 toy. I like the fact that they painted the little light on the back red because in a couple G1 episodes he's going around and it has a red light on top that's beeping like R2-D2. I wish he was blue though. That's my only complaint. Now he does have a little couple of little holes there on the back as you can see and you can actually put Prime's gun in those holes so Roller can roll around all armed and ready for battle. Now it is a little bit of a tight fit. You kind of got to squeeze and twist a little bit to get it to attach, but there you go. So there is your weaponized roller. Now I like how the blaster here has paint applications on the stock. That's really cool. I didn't notice that before. So now taking a look at the trailer. Trailer looks really good and really, really faithful to the Generation 1 toy counterpart even down to the collar scheme. So I love that. Even has the white and blue stripe on the side, only missing the Autobot logo. And I'm sure I'm gonna take care of that with some toy hacks. A lot of the same sculpted details too. You got the little circle right there. Let's see, the stripes, the rivets along the top. I mean, I love that. That looks awesome. A great addition to the trailer though, is he has these struts on the end that you could fold down for better stability. And speaking of stability, there are outriggers here that you can bring out. And then there's these little sections right here. Just pull those down. Those, at least on mine, are really tight. So now he has a lot of extra stability. That was popping out. I don't want to show that off just yet. So that looks really good. Now the back of the trailer, I really like how this works. First off, Check out the paint applications right there on the back. You got silver there for the bumper and the red taillights. I think that looks great. So normally the back just folds down into a ramp, but with this figure, you got these little ramps that slide out and you just angle those down and then swing your door open like so. So now roller can just roll right up into prime for storage. Now, since this is a legend scale trailer, you really don't have a lot of options as far as fitting vehicles inside. But if you had say a newer MicroMaster, he works perfectly for going inside along with G1 tailgate. Forgot his name for a second. G1 tailgate works really good. Anything else is gonna be a little bit too big. So now going from right here, just like G1, you're gonna split the trailer in half revealing the base or the platform on the inside. And here on the back is the repair drone. Just bring him up just like the original G1 toy. Rotate that around. And on this side, you're gonna bring out the little radar dish. 
These are on ball joints, as you can see. So there you go. Now taking a closer look at the drone, he looks good. Great paint applications there for the cockpit or window. But now he looks like he has little missiles instead of laser guns, and those are really painted nice. Now this canopy does not open, nor does the claw pinch. It can move around, it does have an elbow, but I kind of wish it had a little pinching mechanism. Inside of the trailer, pretty plain. They do have some nice diamond plating details all the way around, but it just needs something more. I might take some toy hack scraps and see what I can make with this trailer. And of course, you can put roller up in here, you can put tailgate up in there, big daddy. I mean, you can fit a couple cars, but that's about it. I mean, also, if you wanted to, you could do the thing where they stand the trailer up on its end. So you've got that going on, but I've never been a fan of that look, even way back in generation one. So now let's take a look at this little Optimus Prime. Now my first impressions with this little Optimus Prime after I got him out of the package was, wow, this figure looks like he just stepped right out of the 1984 cartoon. He looks amazing. They got all the detail, the little yellow triangle on the arms, the yellow there on the belt. He even has the blue crotch that you cannot see but Magic Square decided to paint that anyway. I think that is awesome. Head sculpt, dead on Optimus Prime. I love that, it looks so good. Though I do wish the eyes were painted a little better. They kind of disappear into the black of his face, kind of a dead eye look, but they got the mouth plate painted good, the crest painted good. I mean, paint applications are spot on. Look at the windshield wipers right there. Moving on down, he's got the faux gas tanks on the side of his legs. There's a little paint applications there in the toes. Man, this guy looks so good. And I know what you're thinking. Hey, he's missing the smokestacks. Well, Magic Square does give you a couple of different options. If I can get them all gathered here, they are tiny. You've got these really long smokestacks, and then you've got the shorter smokestacks. Get them all out here. So yeah, these are nice and tiny. So I guess you can do long smokestacks. Let's see, got two pegs and they're gonna slot right in to the slots on his arms. So let's get those in. These are so hard to get a hold of. I've got those big old six foot four man hands. Get in there. So there he is with the longer smokestacks. So that doesn't look too bad, but I think I prefer the shorter smokestacks and the shorter ones. Let me bring one of those out for you. So I can compare with the longer. The shorter smokestacks have the angle. Let me see if I can get that focused. So they, they have an angled tip. So let's try these out. Let's see how these go. They angle away from the body, I believe. And those are hard to get a hold of. But once they get pegged in, if you get them in just right, throw that one across the table. There you go. Once they're pegged in, they seem to be fairly solid. So yeah, I do like the shorter smokestacks better. Now let's go into some articulation with Prime. Heads on a ball joint can look up and down, do a complete 360. The arms can do a complete 360 as well. And they can also go out, if you pull out slightly, you'll pull out this little hinge, which will bring the arms out, though they don't go all the way. They kind of stop right there. There is a elbow bend, elbow rotation, and there is a wrist rotation. And that's mainly because the wrists are pegged in. There is waist rotation and an ab crunch, a heck of an ab crunch. You can actually sit there and watch TV. Legs can go forward slightly. They're gonna hit there on the hip skirt. They can go out slightly, back slightly. There is a thigh rotation, a double knee bend, ankle tilt, and let's see. That's about it. So he's got pretty good articulation for what he is. Now I've already went over the smokestacks here. Let's go over, stand back up. 
Let's go over some of these other smaller accessories. Like right here, I've got this little teeny tiny matrix. It actually looks really good, but my gosh, is this thing tiny. And this goes in his chest. Just open up the front and there's a little peg here. Let's see if I can do this. That's the biggest problem I have with this figure. He's so small and my fingers are so big. So you can see the slot. I almost don't have enough fingernails. There we go. So you got the matrix there and shut the chest up so that's secured. Now, I do not like that clear plastic or that translucent plastic for the chest. I hate it when you can see the junk on the inside. I wish that was painted blue. It may look better in vehicle mode, but for robot mode, I don't like that one bit. So let's go ahead and take the matrix back out because you cannot have that in for transformation to vehicle mode anyway. So let's go over the fists or the extra hands. The hand that's attached is this one right here. It kind of has a little grabby hand and that actually works perfect for holding his weapon. Kind of squeeze it down in there and there you go. So he's holding his gun that you saw earlier with that nice paint application there. That looks really good. Now he does come with closed fists as well, but for some reason the gun will not go in the closed fist. I mean, that is as far. I think I have that fist upside down for one, but still, I tried it with the right fist earlier. It does not want to go in. That's as far as I can get the gun to go into the fist. And like I said, that's both. Here's the right fist, just so I'm confirming. And I'm pushing on that thing. That's as far as it's going to go. So I'm pretty much going to leave those fists in for holding the weapon. The other fists are the pointy finger you have right here. So he's got two pointy fingers. So we can go ahead and pop that fist out here. Pop the pointy finger in. So there you go, he is scolding you for some reason or saying, this is the end of the line, Megatron. So I dig that, that, that one's not too bad, but like I said, I prefer these open hand fists. I think they look a lot better. Just peg that right back in. Let's see, the other accessory he has is his Energon Axe, which looks really good. Translucent plastic, it's kind of a clear translucent plastic as far as the energy ball and the long extension here. But once you get to the blade, see how it's kind of opaque? I like that. And that attaches, well, just knocked off a smokestack. Just pull the hand out, put the Energon Axe in, and there you go. So that looks really cool. And that is not the tightest fit, but once you get in there, I think it will stay and looks really good. And I have to show you this, as I was getting Prime ready for his spot on camera, I had Roller, and I was looking underneath Roller and I saw he had these two slots. So I'm thinking that you can actually store Prime's gun on top of Roller and then the axe, I don't know if this is supposed to go like this, but the axe stores perfectly underneath there and Roller still rolls with the axe and weapon attached. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get Prime's or get Prime put back together here. And there you go, Magic Square's Legend Class Optimus Prime, all armed and ready for battle. Now, let's get him transformed into vehicle mode. Okay, now the first thing I'm gonna do before I start transforming Optimus Prime is I'm gonna go ahead and remove the smokestacks because I know I'm gonna be knocking those things off during the whole transformation. Next, I'm gonna take the head and turn it around so it's facing back because these in, whoa. Okay, is that, I think I just discovered light piping. I'll be damned. He has light piping. Well, that explains the eyes now. And that's actually fairly decent light piping if you can get a light in behind your figure. So that's really cool. So anyway, the head is turned completely around and the reason is 
these antennas scare me to death. They look so fragile and I just want to get this head tucked away and out of the way. So firstly, you're going to take this whole section, bring it back and this little part right here, go ahead and bring that all the way out. And it's easier just to go ahead and extend Prime's body away from his torso there. So now we're going to take Prime's head and rotate this around. This is a tight little joint. Get that down, get his head just right. And tuck that in just like so. Make sure the head is straight. You're gonna bring this section up over. Scared to death with these antennas. I think I got that in all the way. Yep, there we go. So just go ahead and snap that back in place. That tends to flare out just a little bit, so you got to do a lot of pressure to snap that in. But once it's in, it is secure. Next thing we'll do is bring the arms up and take these little flaps, bring these down, fold the fists up and under. Now, I like how Magic Square does this. They enable this one little section here to transform with the fists, knowing that you can pop those fists off. So I think that's pretty cool. Now you're going to bring the arm up like so. Bring this little flap out and bring that down. So you've got that going on. We'll go ahead and do that for the other arm. Bring out the flap, bring out the other flap, rotate the fist, angle the arm like so, and bring that down and push in. Now I will say one thing about this plastic. It seems really, really solid. And I read somewhere that it's that nylon plastic, you know, kind of the same plastic they make dog bones out of. So if that's the case, that's really cool because it actually feels really solid. Now what you're gonna do with the arms up, go in with your thumbnail and pull out the sides of his abs here, the sides of his torso. That brings out the wheels. Go ahead and bring the arms back some more, open the chest, and now you're going to pull out the grill and the matrix storage area and you're going to flip these around while bringing this up and over and then take this section that stored the matrix and you're going to collapse that into the grill like so. So now we're going to rotate, let's see, that's in the way, rotate these around. I said everything's so tight, it amazes me how complicated this is. Well, not really complicated, but the engineering for this tiny little figure. So you got everything rotated like so. And now go ahead and finish. What am I doing wrong? Missing some, oh yeah, this whole section here has to move. There's a lot of moving parts and I just can't get my fat fingers in to move everything right. So you're gonna bring this down. Go ahead and shut those, get the wheel down. So you want to bring this section here to the front. There we go. Might need to open those windows up again. It's like I say, it's not complicated, but it is complicated. If that makes any sense whatsoever, just trying to get all these things to rotate around each other. I've transformed this guy three times and of course right now on camera is where it's I'm gonna have my issues so let's see maybe I don't have that pulled out enough <laughs> there we go just bring it around the other way so now we're gonna get everything tabbed together easier said than done okay so you got these little tabs so you're gonna tab in the front section here to what Prime's waist was so there you go, go ahead and shut the windows up. And there is more or less the front of the vehicle. Now with the arms, you're gonna do these G1 style. Just bring the shoulders back and you'll bring the arms in the slot right here. Do the same on the other side. Rotate back, make the fist keeps popping out. Make sure this fist all the way up inside and now just squeeze everything together make sure it's all tabbed in 
And now with everything tabbed in, you've got the front of Optimus Prime's cab. So now we'll move on to the legs. We're gonna start with the back here. There is a little section you gotta flip out on the back and then move this section right here up and out of the way, just like so. And you'll see Optimus Prime's other wheels there inside. So you wanna kind of bring those out and down. And then after you pull these out, they're on a little extender right there. Go ahead and rotate these around, drop the figure, and now you're gonna pull out I can get you to see it. There is the gas tank. Pull out the gas tank here and that little red section. So you've got all of that you just unfolded. Now, go ahead and collapse the toes onto each other. And just kind of squish that into place like so. And then you're going to collapse this whole leg up and over, kind of uh, Combiner Wars style. Bring that up and over like so. Bring this out and this section here is gonna tab right there. Get the leg all the way back. Get that tabbed in. Go ahead and bring this section here. Fold that up. Bring this in and around like so. And then take the flap and fold it down. So there we've got one leg see so you need to collapse that foot just a little bit more there we go so that's how the foot should look and now we'll do the same on the other side so you're going to bring out the back flap unfold this section right here bring it out and around bring the leg section up pull the wheels out get the gas tank and red flap extended that one's stiff Get that out there, collapse the legs or the leg. It's hard to do it after you've got the one already collapsed. Look for the little slot. Let's go ahead and collapse the toes on each other. Lots and lots of really stiff joints on this figure. That is kind of scary at first, but since the plastic seems very durable, Let's see, I collapsed that wrong. It needs to go behind. My gosh, that's stiff. That's what she said. There we go. Collapse that in. Get that leg up. It just amazes me. Like I said, there's this much engineering in such a small figure. It's awesome. Get that collapse down. Fold that down. Now... We're going to squeeze the legs together. Make sure those toes are down and in the right position. There we go. So now you've got this little slot right back in there where this section is going to attach. Maybe. Okay, that's attached. Now you're gonna try to get these little tabs right here and attach it to the side of Prime. These attach to the little arm flaps. And that is hard to do. And there you go. There is Prime in truck mode. He's still, I don't think he's tabbed in all the way. There we go. I felt a soft little snap right there. God, I hope that was him attaching to something. So there you go, there is Prime in his cab mode. Let's go ahead and attach, let's do the longer smokestacks this time. They will attach here on the back now. There's one. And there is the other, maybe. Get that lined up just right. These are so tiny. I swear I spend more time transforming Legends class figures than anything else. So there you go. There is Prime with the smoke stacks attached in his cab mode. And I must say, this looks pretty good, though I do believe the back is a little too thick for my liking. But the front of the cab looks amazing. 
And as I said earlier, how I didn't like those translucent windows, they look great in truck mode. You don't see anything there on the inside because you open it up, there is nothing on the inside. So that works really, really good. I wish there was some blue paint right there for the windows, but hey, is what it is. The wheels look great, along with the rims, gas tank, paint applications, phenomenal. Back, the back's a little messy. He rolls really good. I mean, he zips right along. Now there is some place where you can store the Matrix in truck mode, which is right there. Whoops, didn't mean to bump the camera. It goes right there. I can't get it right now, so trust me, you can store the Matrix right there, but for me, it's gonna stay in the baggie. So yeah, there is Prime in his cab mode. Now we'll get the trailer here, flip those back, and there's no real place to attach Prime's trailer. What you do is you just got this little notch right there, hook it on the trailer, and it just kind of frictions in place, and it works. I mean, that's, that's really cool. I mean, I've seen some people complain about that, but I mean, I'm, whoops. Well, there's a bad example there, but yeah, if you're doing it really, really rough, it's gonna pop off, but just gradually moving him back and forth, it holds on really good, and I dig it. And as you can see, I added a Autobot logo there on the trailer, and I'm gonna do the same for Prime momentarily. So, just for some comparison, here is the Magic Square Optimus Prime with Generation 1. And as you can see, Magic Square did a great job with their tribute to the Generation 1 figure. I do wish Magic Square had some chrome there for the smokestacks and gas tanks, but I think there was an exclusive Magic Square figure that was metallic. I also wish Magic Square had the silver stripe along the side like G1, but I think that would have messed with robot mode. But all in all, I love how this looks with the G1 figure. So all in all, Magic Square Optimus Prime's vehicle mode looks amazing and I couldn't be happier with it. And as you can see, I did add the Autobot logo on the cab, makes a world of difference. And now for some quick size comparisons, here is Magic Square's MSB18 Light of Justice Legends Class Optimus Prime with Generation 1 Optimus Prime, Earthrise Optimus Prime, Kingdom Core Class Optimus Prime, and New Age's Legend Style Megatron. And I think these two look great together. The Magic Square MSB-18 Light of Justice is an amazing Transformers toy. I gotta give a huge shout out to my friends and fellow YouTubers, Bert the Stormtrooper, Deluxe Baldwin, Kato's Collection, Inu Tabi, for talking me into this guy. We're all on a chat together, and I swear we all cost each other so much money. A few well-placed Toy Hacks decals here on the shoulder, tip of the gun, and on the trailer make all the difference. He is a little scary to transform, and I'm afraid I'm going to lose some of those parts, so they're going in a baggie to live forever. But all in all, a great figure, and now I'm afraid I have the legend scale bug, and I want more of these fantastic mini masterpieces. So there you go, guys. The Magic Square MSB-18 Light of Justice. So... Does the Magic Square MSB-18 Light of Justice Legend Scale Optimus Prime belong in your collection? Absolutely. If you're an Optimus Prime fan, I think you are going to love this guy. As I said in the review, this is a mini masterpiece figure. It still just amazes me how clean the robot mode looks, the wheels are all gone, and how cartoon accurate he is. Granted, I'm new to the whole Legends game. The only ones I have are my New Age Megatron and the Magic Square Stunicons that I transformed to Menasaur and really haven't touched again. But this is the first that I've really fooled with in Optimus Prime, and I am just floored with how good this is. I mean, transformation is a little rough, and that's mainly because of my fat fingers, 
but this guy is awesome and I couldn't be happier. Also, I couldn't be happier with the customer service of Toy Dojo. I reached out to them and they immediately fixed the problem with the accessory pack for my Optimus Prime. And according to tracking, I should have it in the mail tomorrow. So Toy Dojo, highly, highly recommended. Also gonna give another huge shout out to Kato who lent me his parts so I could do the review on this figure. So that's what this community's all about. I've made some great friends and we help each other out. Now guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Also, if you're in any position to help out the channel, I have a new super thanks button that YouTube has recently activated, and I also offer channel memberships. And I have to give a huge shout out to all my current channel members because it's support like yours that helps keep this channel growing. Once again, guys, this is Patreon Prime, signing out. Hello!